Hello, my name is Eric Kavitin, and today I'm going to show you a preview of ESTET's relativity environment, along with some of the benefits of using our system compared to a local PST email document review. So let's begin. You can access relativity on any computer that has internet access, so you can work securely from anywhere in the world. Open the browser of your choice. Uh, we recommend Google Chrome because the newest version of relativity is optimized for Chrome. However, Firefox, Safari, or Internet Explorer is fine. So in the address bar, type relativity.estet.com and hit enter. This will take you to our secure login page. Estet hosts this application in our own data center, which has been vetted by the Orange County IT Services Department. We audit, follow strict security procedures and use the latest technology for the best performance and services possible. Relativity currently designates Estet as a best in service premium hosting partner. So this is your workspace. Here you have full control to change any elements you see within this view. You can also control the views for other users so that they only have access to the features and tools that they will need to use. These views are fully customizable and different reviewers or users based on their permissions can see different views. For example, if you do not want your batch reviewers to see this view and you only want them to see documents that they have checked out to themselves, you can select that view to display automatically when they log in. That way, when a batch reviewer accesses the workspace, they'll immediately be taken to the documents they need to review. Now let's take a look at how to create redactions in Relativity. We'll go ahead and open the first document we see here, which is a PDF. When you open the document, you'll need to make sure that the viewer is in image mode in order to redact the document. So once you press this image button, we can redact. From the Relativity toolbar, select the Redact button to open the Redaction tool, and select the type of redaction you'd like to apply. You can see here you can put in a black box redaction, a cross box redaction, a text box redaction, or a white box redaction. We'll go ahead and use the black box redaction. Go ahead and find the area of the document which you'd like to redact and drag, click and drag the rectangle in order to cover the information you'd wish to redact. And once you let go, the redaction has been created and added to the document. Once your redaction is created, you can move, resize, or by right-clicking, delete the redaction. The next feature of Relativity we're going to look at is complex document searching. Within Relativity, you can search for keywords and field conditions very quickly. However, for more complex searching, we're going to go to the dedicated saved searches area. To access the saved searches area, Navigate to the bottom left of the screen and click the magnifying glass icon. This will take you to an area of the workspace where you can create, save, or modify existing searches. In order to create a new search, go ahead and click the new search button. Here you have options to name your search and save it for later, and to add keyword and field conditions to your search. So let's go ahead and call this test search one. In the top left of your screen, you can choose whether this search will be viewable by you or whether the search will be public. You can also choose to include family, duplicates, or email thread groups in your results. You can select the scope of your search, 
For example, if you'd only like to search a specific folder, you can choose to limit your search to certain areas. In addition to a basic keyword search, you can select conditions. There are a few different types of fields which you may be interested in searching. For example, you may want to run a date restriction on your search. In order to do that, you would find the date field that you'd like to search on and select whether you'd like to search within a specific date range for a specific date or for before or after a certain date. For example, if you'd like to search for all documents from before January 1st, 2015, you would select is before and find that date in the calendar that pops up. So this will limit the search results to anything from before January 1st, 2015. You can also search based on text metadata. For example, if you'd like to find documents with a specific file name, you can navigate to the file name field. And you can search for documents with an exact file name or for file names similar to a certain phrase or containing a certain phrase. For example, if we'd like to find any file which has the word business in the name, we can add that condition. There are a number of other fields you can search for. You can search based on tagging conditions, on system fields, or on email threading conditions as well. For now, we'll limit it to these two conditions. You can combine these searches using the AND or OR button. For example, if you are looking for all documents from before January 1st, 2015, where the file name contains the word business, you would select the AND condition. Another advantage of using the Save Search area is you can customize how your results appear. For example, since we're searching based on the date last modified, and the file name fields, we can locate those fields and add them to our results. Once we add those fields to our results, we can select whether we'd like to sort the results based on a specific condition. In this case, maybe I want to see the document results in chronological order. In that case, I would select that date field and it will sort the results based on that field. Once I've finished adding conditions, I can choose to save the search for later, to run the search without saving it, or to run the search and save the results. So I'm going to select that Save and Search button. Once I run that search, you can see that there are 280 documents within the workspace which fit the conditions and they're displaying in chronological order. If you create a search and save it as a public search, you can share the results with any other user and they'll be able to view the results just by looking for that search name. You can also email a link to a search, filter your results, and review documents from the searching area. Lastly, I will show you how to review and tag email threads and how to propagate that single tag into the entire family inclusive email group. In order to show you how to tag a full email group, let's go ahead and navigate to an email which is part of a larger threading group. We're gonna go ahead and click the email with control number 248. Now this particular email is part of a group of three emails. In order to see the other emails in the group, navigate to the bottom right and click this icon. This will show you the other emails which fall into the same threading group. You can click over to the other documents in the group by clicking the control number. When you look at an email 
and decide that it may be relevant, you can edit the tagging of the document. Go ahead and select the proper view from the coding layout and click edit. In this case, let's go ahead and apply a responsive tag to this email. Once you've tagged that responsiveness field, as well as any other fields you would like to tag within the document, go ahead and press Save. This workspace has been customized so that the responsiveness tag will propagate to any other emails within the same thread group. Today we've only scratched the surface of what the Relativity Document Review Platform can do. So thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you next time.